Your intrepid party of motley adventurers find themselves huddled, gazing upon the clock tower watching as the hands slowly pass through minutes as though they were hours. A storm brews overhead, and shivers angle up their spines. Something is amiss. In the distance they hear the town crier informing the masses of the danger ahead. Salutations, my name is Zane Morgan. Welcome to another episode of Zane Morgan Crafts, where we just do the most. <laughs> this video was long in the making. I've spent probably two and a half months working on this project, so it's... The Bell Tower. Clock Tower? Bell Tower? It's a clock tower that has bells, so you can call it whatever you want. So you're probably like, la la la, shut up, let's see it. Cool. Movie magic! Ta-da! Oh shit, it's tall. Here's the tower in all its glory. It is 40 inches from base to roof. Yeah, 40 inches. It has lighting, it has sound, it has working clock faces, it has a playable interior. If you wanna see it in action, join me on my journey as I show you how I create it from start to finish. And then we're gonna crack this baby open and I'm gonna show you how it works. Here we go, let's do this, yes. So really, in all honesty, when I started this project, I had no idea how the ground floor was gonna look. I just kind of winged it, but I knew that it was in the same town as the townhouse that I had created, so I was going with that same style. And you see here that I'm using tacky glue to connect all the edges. Ignore that, because I went back and fixed it and used hot glue. Do not use tacky glue like this. It, it just, it doesn't dry properly. Use PVA glue and that kind of stuff if you're trying to seal the outside of it, but don't glue pieces of foam together with it. It is a nightmare and it does not dry all the way. It takes forever. But yeah, here you see I'm just tracing out the horizontal slats that uh, will eventually become limestone. Yeah. You know, they're not perfectly straight, these lines that I'm cutting, but neither am I, so it works out. But anyways, the next level we're working on holds the bells inside of it, so I take the bits that I 3D print, trace them on, and then I stacked all four walls together because they are identical on every side and I did not want to cut these out one by one. Um, and this will create the space for the sound to come through the foam and you can hear the bells. So you're probably thinking, wow, it has sound in this build, so that must be complicated. Actually, it was probably like the easiest part of this build. I just took the extra invite by voice module that I had from the diorama build, loaded up a sound bit that I created in Audacity. Actually, it's using the Taco Bell toll sound. And disguised the button by placing that plastic decorative bit in it and just gluing it to the backside of the 3D printed vent. That's it, easy. For a lot of the build, I just found myself staring blankly at the project and whining and complaining. In retrospect, that's stupid. <laughs> I mean, my biggest issues here were just figuring out the placement and the order that I was gonna do things in. Because at the end of the day, I already had the full thing designed in Blender. And it was just a matter of taking it from print and placing it on foam and making everything work together. When I printed out these pieces, I needed everything to fit perfectly. So I just used what I printed as a template and just cut everything out. And here you see I'm working on the base and I knew I wanted the base to have like a lawn or a garden around it. So here I'm just kind of cutting everything out along the shape of the building. And color scheme, I knew it was gonna be limestone because it was going to be in the same town as the townhouse build. I wanted it to reflect that. So here I'm just playing around with the colors and seeing how everything's gonna look. The next big hurdle for me was the roof and the next section of the playable interior. The playable interior part, that was really simple. I had a staircase that I designed, printed that out, and then it was just a matter of making the floor. The hard part, <laughs> was shingles. I spent a lot of time placing individual shingles. It ended up being about 2,000 shingles for just this one roof section. So that's fun. The next area is the level with the clock faces on it. So here I just cut out four pieces that were exactly the same size, beveled the edges at a 45 degree angle, textured them, and then again traced on my 3D prints 
cut them out with a hot wire tool and here you can see I learned and I'm hot gluing the edges together. Thank God, so much faster. Next is probably the trickiest part to print and that was the large trim pieces that go around the upper edges of the tower. And the only reason I say that is because they were so heavy and large that I really had to figure out the supports. And I think it took like 18 hours to print or 14 hours, some ridiculous god awful amount of time. And when I woke up and they failed, not only did they use a lot of resin, but I couldn't use them and it was just, it was pretty painful. But when they did print, I was happy and I could move on. So here you can see I just built like the frames to signify the walls and that's because the walls are already there, but I needed to represent that space. So I just built like the timber frame of the walls and this is the area that the clockwork is gonna be in. So actually it's really a small space. It's probably four by four. And here you see me using the hot wire tool. The idea was to place LEDs here and it ended up not working out because I forgot I had railing and stuff that all went along the edge. So ignore this part, it was scrap, but left it in just to show you that there are things in my process that don't always work out and that's okay. So here's a little interim break of just me being stressed out about how I'm gonna make the roof section of this. I don't know why this is so hard for me or so stressful for me, but I guess it's because it's the final piece. I, I don't know, but I'm really trying to figure out how to do the bell shape of the roof. I mean, there, there's options, right? I could easily three print it, but that would make this piece like hella 3D printed, I really don't want that. I wanna make it out of foam or cardboard or both, uh, or make a combination. Cause I know um, the decorative pieces on the outside, they're gonna be 3D printed. So I don't want the whole thing to be 3D printed. I feel like that's cheating. I mean, it's not cheating. Cause I just, I don't, I don't know. <sighs> what I think I'm gonna do is make cross sections of the 3D file to act as like braces or the structure underneath so that I can just kind of apply the cardboard to it. Maybe, maybe that's what I'll do. In fact, that's what I did not do. I tried to be all clever and make a solid block of all these pieces of foam together and print out a guide to get the shape of the roof so I could use it on the Proxon and cut it out. While this would have worked in theory and I did have Gerard Boom to direct me through it, I am an idiot and I couldn't figure it out. So it ended up in the trash. What I did end up doing is what I said in the uh, blog video there, and that is I printed out cross sections and that allowed me to build it up, get the shape that I needed, and then ultimately glue it together and then make thin sheets that I could apply over the structure to give me the shape. And I know in the cam video I had said cardboard, but no, I went with just really thin sheets of foam. And then the upper roof part, it has like these vented areas. Uh, so I needed to cut in space for those. Now it's the fun part. And trust me when I say fun, I really mean hell because this next step prompted my whole creation of the Shingle Jig 2021. Check out that video. Yep, shingles. Like I said earlier, it started with individual shingles and I just said F that. So I created my own shingles. The next step was to glue on the 3D pieces and just fit everything together. Really, it wasn't that bad. Once I got the shingles on, it went pretty smoothly. The next step was just gluing in the windows and the final pieces, and then it was time for paint. And I wasn't even gonna include a painting part of this video, but I did a poll on my Instagram and I think just about every single person voted yes, we want to see your paint process. So you get what you asked for, here it is. I base coated everything in Camel by Folk Art. Next, I went with linen and right after linen, vintage white. So that is my recipe for sandstone. Uh, really, really easy. It's just a lot of dry brushing. <laughs> 
Fun fact, I actually ran out of camel paint for this project because it was so big, so I had to buy a second bottle to finish it. Uh, after the entire building was coated in this color, I moved on to the base and I wanted earth. So what we're gonna do is we put down some PVA glue, sprinkle some coffee on top of that, let it dry, and while that's drying, we're gonna paint the clock faces. This I was kind of dreading just because of the fine details, but all I did, I took that vintage white color and some true black and just went in, painted the dial to my best ability, and then did the same dry brush process. So that's that camel, vintage white, and linen. And then to dirty it up, weather it a little bit, I put on a homemade brown wash, and there you have it. I used the Dremel to drill out the middle so we could get those clock bits inside. Once the clock face was in, I just went around with some putty and filled in the gaps and just did the same paint scheme. And then for every floor on the interior, all I used for it was some roughed up craft sticks, uh, painted it with some browns and brown dry washes, and then went over it with a Citadel Paints gloss, and that made it look like some nice polished wood floors. I modeled these stairs myself, and again, I just painted them up the same color scheme that I did the wood floors so that it would blend in. The coffee was dry by this point, so I went over that with some PVA glue and hit it with my static grass applicator. And now we got a nice lawn. Okay, so now we're gonna break down the build and we can see it up close in its finished state. I know it's out of frame, but I'm gonna break it apart. Here is the roof piece. So on four sides here, we have working clock faces so that's all this piece is. This is actually probably the heaviest piece and that's because of all the ornamentation on it. Um, I mean, you could probably sit this by itself on a mantle and this is a pretty cool clock. So I really like that piece. The next area that we have here is the bell room, belfry, I don't know what you call it. It's where the bell is. And of course that has the bell sound. As you see here, this is that playable area. I had designed a clock gear that could be interactive that you could play with. And I don't have any of the furniture bits in here glued down. That way it's, you can move it around if you wanna play more and move your characters in there or set the scene how you wanna set it. Uh, but that's there. Here's the little ladder going up to the roof line. So the next level that you see here, this is where the bell tower or the bells are actually located. There's the stairs, there's wood floors. And then again, I had designed, I had designed a piece to sit along in there and that's just some bells, a ladder going up. Yeah. So we turn the battery on and you have lights here here, well, what happens when we take this off? Huh, the lights go out. And that's achieved through something cool. So if you see here, here's the playable area of the base floor. We have the stairs, we have some walls, we have furniture, but the cool part is these bits right here. And what these are, they're copper tape. For this to work, I looked at basically dollhouse wiring. Side note, the bottom's ugly. It's not a finished piece on the bottom, but I did it so I could show you how it works. So if you look on the bottom, here's the battery pack, right? Well, we have our copper leads leading to the different wires for the lights. Um, so we got our positive and negative side. That's gonna correspond over here and when these contacts meet, when it's placed down, that activates the lights on the next level. So in theory, you could run that through the whole piece or multiple layers. And I thought that was really cool. I thought, you know, for tall pieces like this, where you don't wanna run batteries in each section, that's kind of annoying. 
this was a solution for that. And I mean, you can touch them, it's low voltage, you're not gonna get hurt from it. So here's the ground floor. As you can see, you can move your minis around. It's playable on the stairs. Uh, you got your electricity. This is honestly like my favorite part of the build, only because it looks pretty good, at least in my opinion. Uh, it kind of has that diorama feel to it. And I'm just really, really happy with it. So this is the uh, ground floor of the building. Uh, I designed the bookcase. These are actually Loot Studio, so they're not mine, but like the stairs, the bookcase, this stuff, I designed this myself, so. Taking pride in my own work. So that's it, that's the video. I can't quit you. If you wanna see the glamour shots and a little glow up, wait for the end, but as far as me talking, that's it, I'm done. So if you love the build, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, if you want to see more content like this, hit that sub button. I plan on making a lot more stuff. And hopefully it's not another tower. We'll see. But yeah, if you want to see more playable interiors, let me know. This was technically my first. So yeah, I will see you around. Check out the montage. All right, bye guys.